Good morning. Uh, I'm Chris Miskaitis. I'm an application engineer with Oriental Motor. I also have Grant with me. Um, he's going to help with a demo and maybe with some questions if you guys have. Feel free at any point to uh, type in questions on your screen there. You should be able to type in and I'll see them and I'll answer those as they come in if possible. Um, today's topic is single and dual axis robots. When we consider these types of systems, there are two different sections that we want to consider for designing. One is going to be the mechanical design. Um, as far as that goes, we're going to want to know how fast we're going to need to move. Are we going to be pushing a load, pulling a load, carrying, rotating a load? How are we moving? Um, also, how much weight are we moving? Um, that will let us know how much moment load we have on different different actuators to know if um, if it will be able to do the job or not. The second consideration is going to be our electrical or our controls section. Um, as far as that goes, we want to know are we going to be using a PLC um, to operate everything or do we need to independently move different uh, different sections of the machine. So those are the two different sections that I'm going to be talking about today. We'll also go over a demo at the end of the presentation. Um, it's a dual axis demo that will show two different actuators, uh, two different types of controls that we'll be going over throughout the seminar as well. As far as our mechanical options go, we have many different actuators that are going to be available um, for this seminar and for the ease of integration we're going to be using the actuators that use the same types of controllers. Um, they'll all be using the motor um, that we call our alpha step type motor which is a closed loop step motor. Uh, we're going to see the picture on the bottom there. It has a resolver that's built in the back and then the motor, and in this case, the motor is then going to be attached to either a linear or a rotary actuator. Um, just a little bit on the resolver that's built in the back, we're going to see that in the center, we're going to have a metal piece that's going to rotate with the rotor. And as that rotates, it goes through different coils of wire. Um, we're going to see that the windings, um, the inductance through these windings is going to help us tell the relationship um, between the rotor and the stator, and we're going to be able to tell uh, what degrees we're at based on that resolver. So all of these are going to be closed loop type actuators. The different options that we have here for the actuators, all of them will be using what we call our ESMC controller, which is kind of a standard controller for us, or we'd be able to swap it out for what's called an Alpha Step Plus controller. We'll get more into the details on those two types of controllers um, a little bit later in the seminar, but all these actuators will use those two controllers. So our first option is going to be a ball screw actuator. Um, this type of actuator is made to carry a load on top of it, so we'll just see the table right here. We're going to put a load directly on top of here, and um, as the motor rotates, we're going to see there's a coupling right here, there's a ball screw. Um, as that rotates, there's a nut and a, um, a table here that's going to extend and retract back and forth. So we'll carry the load um, with that. See, uh, about 600 kilograms is our maximum, 850 millimeter stroke is the longest that we can go with this type of actuator. Our speed uh, maximum is about 800 millimeters per second. The second type of actuator that we can couple here is going to be called the cylinder type. So uh, the series is the EZC2 series. The stroke length here we're going to say is it's going to be shorter, only 50 to 300 millimeters, so not quite as long as the slides, but these are made more to push and pull a load as opposed to carry a load. So we'll see a similar design here with uh, the motor in the back, a coupling, and then as that rotates we're going to extend this rod in and out to push or pull. 
and all these do have brakes that are available as well. Those are mainly used if we um, have vertical applications and we want to hold the load. The third actuator here is called the Easy A. This is actually one of them that's used on the demo that we'll show at the end in conjunction with a, a slider version. This is the same idea as the cylinder type, except we're going to have a, a guide block and a guide rail that's built inside. Um, what that's going to allow is for us to put some side load on the actuator. Uh, with a standard cylinder type, we're not able to put that type of side load on there, so we can't have any moment loading. Um, this gives us the ability to put some moment loads on there. We'll see in this chart down here, you might not be able to read it um, very well, but it says maximum moment load in newton meters, so our pitching, yawing, and rolling moment loads here. Um, so we are able to put some side load on there. The next type of actuator is called our PWA2 series. Again, we're going to have our alpha step motor in the back. We'll see that there's a, a gear reduction here. And through the gear, we're going to have the ball screw that's going to extend and retract out. Because of this gearing, we have a very powerful um, thrust load. We're going to see that the, it's called a power cylinder. Um, we can get up to 5,000 newtons maximum of thrust force. So very high um, thrust force. Because of that gearing, though, we're going to see that the speed is limited. With that 5,000 newtons of thrust force, we only get 70 millimeters per second of speed. Um, so with that gearing, we do reduce our speed. Another type of actuator is a belt actuator. This is called the SPV series. We'll see much faster than a ball screw actuator. Maximum speed would be 1,500 millimeters per second, and our stroke length also gets up to 1,500 millimeters. So much longer, much faster than a screw type actuator, but the downside would be that we're not able to carry as much load. Um, because per revolution of the motor, we're going to move, um, move a greater distance. We'll see here. Um, Maximum transportable mass, we're at about 10 or 15 kilograms, depending on which actuator we pick. So much reduced from the 60 kilogram maximum on the slide. And the last actuator that I want to talk about is not a linear actuator, but a rotary actuator. It's called our DD. Uh, we'll have the motor and then a pinion that's um, going to rotate this type of ring gear around and then as that rotates we're going to see the table is going to rotate as well. So we typically have cross roller bearings except for the smallest size um, that are built in here. That's going to allow for high high loads to be put on here. We'll see the largest of these actuators can put 900 pounds directly on top of the table right here. Um, we'll also see the four different frame sizes, the DG60, very small. Um, can handle about 22 pounds directly on top of it, and then we'll increase up to the DG200, which can handle that 900-pound load. As we increase the distance away from the center of the table, um, if there's a moment load or something like that, that 900 pounds will get reduced. Um, but if it's directly on top, we can handle 900 pounds. talk about here is the control section. Um, so I've split this up into two different parts. The first is going to be how to program a single axis um, robot or actuator. We're going to have three different options that I'm going to discuss. The first is going to be called driver mode, the second controller mode, and then the third one is going to be an alpha step plus controller that has full programmability. Um, kind of like a full step motor type controller. So our first one here is called driver mode. What we're going to do is accept pulses from a separate controller or a PLC with a pulse card. Um, so the first option is going to be what's called two pulse mode. What this will do is there's typically two different terminals 
Um, and in this case, we're going to put pulses in one set of terminals to go um, clockwise and the other set to go counterclockwise. Um, what's more common here in the United States would be um, one pulse mode, which we typically call pulse and direction. So we'll put pulses on one terminal every time we want to make a move. And then on the second set of terminals, we'll either turn on or turn off um, this input to designate if we want to go clockwise or counterclockwise. The last option here is what's called a quadrature pulse input mode. So what we can do is we can follow um, an encoder feedback. So if you have another motor or a, a slide of some sort that's outputting a quadrature pulse, um, we can input that pulse into the drive and we can um, follow it. So it would be uh, it would be moving identical moves as the other actuator or other motor. The next mode that we're going to see is called controller mode. So this is where we're going to make the pulses inside of our own controller and send that out to the actuator or to the alpha step motor. So there's two different ways that we can program this, um, either with the, what's called a teaching pendant or there's also software where you can use uh, input the data through there. And we'll see screenshots of the software in a few slides here. The idea behind controller mode is that you're going to input up to 63 different profiles. Um, so speed, acceleration, and deceleration. And then we're going to access those different profiles by turning on or turning off inputs. So we'll call them the M0 through M5 inputs. You turn on or turn off the correct input to say, oh, I want to make move number 10 at this point. And then you would be able to press a start input. And then we would make that uh, move number 10. Uh, as I mentioned, there's two different ways to input that through the teaching pennant or the software. And we also have the ability to use what's called a teaching function. This would allow us to either manually move or move with the teaching pennant or the software, the slide. So if you don't know exactly where the load needs to be moved to, uh, maybe it's 25.2 millimeters, and you're not exactly sure that's where it needs to move, you can manually move it as opposed to trying to measure out how far to tell the slide to move. Um, once we're trying to make moves, there's two different um, options here. One's called an absolute move, and one's an incremental move. So an absolute move um, will move as if you're on a number line. So if I tell it to move to 50, you'll see the top here, if I'm at zero, it will move 50 millimeters. Um, however, if I'm at 100, it's going to move the opposite direction and move to 50. Um, also, if I'm, actually, if I'm already at 50 millimeters and tell it to move to 50, no motion will take place. The other option is what's called incremental. Um, so if I start at zero, tell it to move 50, it's going to increment to 50 millimeters. And then if I tell it to move 50 again, it will go to 100. Um, in order to execute the moves, we'll see down here there's two options. One, selective positioning. This means that I'm going to select one of the 63 profiles. Maybe I want to make move number 10, then move 20, uh, maybe a different order. Sequential positioning, on the other hand, is going to make those moves uh, sequentially. So 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. until you see an open move, um, an open data point, I should say. In that case, it's going to go back to move 0, 1, 2, and you'll repeat every time you press that start input. Um, a couple features here, we can also link moves together. We're going to see four points can be linked together if we're moving in the same direction. So if you make one move, you're going to accelerate up, move a specific distance, and if they're linked together, you can accelerate again from that speed and go at operating speed number two. Um, if you did not link them together, you would have to decelerate down to zero and then accelerate again.
Another feature is what's called the area output. So when I get within a specific area, I'm going to send an output. Uh, this can be very useful for the rest of the machine. Um, you can tell um, another, another application, uh, another part of the machine to do something, to start gluing, to turn on a, uh, a drill, or, or whatever the case would be, what you're trying to do. Um, pick in place, you could tell that you're in the right area to pick up a part. Um, so that's what the area output would be used for. A couple screenshots of the software. It's very similar to an Excel type spreadsheet. So the first page is going to have the 63 different data profiles. And you're going to tell it if it's an absolute or an incremental move, how far you want to go in millimeters, um, what speed you want to go in millimeters per second, um, if it's a single or a linked move, and then your um, push current. So something I haven't mentioned yet is with the cylinder versions, we have the option to have not output 100% of the current to put less in, and um, that would give us a different force out. So we would not be outputting the full force. Uh, we'll also send an output when we get to what percentage of um, force that we've told it to get to. So I'll show you that with the demo as well. We have set one up for um, with a very low push um, current so that you can see what happens when, um, when I've programmed it to do that. Next in the software, we're going to set different parameters. So here we see I.O. parameters. Um, it normally open and normally close logic for a couple different uh, events. Um, also your limit sensor. Um, if we enable or disable those, uh, over travel action, if you hard stop or do a, a soft stop, um, things like that. Next parameters that we want to set are motor parameters. So this would set the current for when you're moving and when you're at standstill. Um, next we see what's called the homing parameters. So here, which direction is home? Is it toward the motor? or is it opposing the motor? So which side of the actuator would home be? Um, also, if we want to offset um, the home, so you could go to one end and then you could tell it to offset by a certain number of millimeters. Um, home type, if we're doing it with sensors or not sensors, we can do sensorless homing with uh, most of these actuators where it will very slowly move back until it hits a hard stop and then um, offset slightly to a home position. So in our demo, we've used both sensors on one axis and no sensors or sensorless homing on the other axis. So we can show both of those um, once we get to the demo. Next, we're going to see the speed parameters. Um, so acceleration rates and common operating speed um, for when you're teaching and things like that. Next, some common parameters where we're going to set our software limits. So if we go past uh, past a certain region, we're going to fault out. Also, our area output region can be set in this area. Uh, we do have now a monitor. So the first thing that we can monitor is our status, which is very useful when we're setting up the actuator. We can see which inputs are turned on, which ones are off. Um, which outputs, which sensors are turned on and off, so we can make sure that everything's working properly before we uh, before we turn on uh, the machine in full function. Also, if there's an alarm condition, you'll be able to see it here. The actual position uh, will be displayed right in that location. The next monitor is going to be the waveform monitor. So this will allow us to uh, graph out our commanded speed versus our actual speed, and then also when certain inputs uh, more outputs get turned on or off. So our move, limit sensors, um, very useful again for testing out to make sure everything's working properly. So we'll see here that our commanded speed versus actual speed look very similar. Um, if we had too much load on here, you might see a, a lag behind um, 
where the actual speed lags behind where it actually should be. So that would indicate that maybe you need to slow down your acceleration a little bit. Um, in that case, the closed loop function of the, the motor is turning on, so we don't want to um, we don't want to add any more load for sure. Uh, last, we're going to have a test function. So the first in the test function is going to be called the I/O. So again, here we can test our inputs, our outputs, and our sensors uh, during our setup. You can turn those on, turn them off, make sure they're working properly. Lastly, the operation test. Uh, we can um, see if we have an alarm, see what position we're in. We can clear an alarm, and then most importantly, we can make every move. So operation data number, um, 0 through 63, or, uh, or 63 different moves. I can see which uh, how far it's telling me to move in millimeters here, and then I can say positioning operation, and it will make that move. can also test out the homing operation um, in this location. There are some functions that we can do in controller mode and not in driver mode. So this um, chart right here shows what we can do um, with controller mode, which is all of these options. Um, in driver mode, we are not able to do the teaching function. Um, the monitor functions where we can see the, the I.O. Um, there's also a pause function that gets used with our controller uh, mode where we can't do that in driver mode. And also the area output function. Um, we are able to do our absolute type um, where we add a battery for backup to the resolver so that we constantly know where the position is. Even if the power gets turned off, we'll know what position we're in when the power gets turned back on. So we have that option in both driver and controller mode. And also the sensorless return to home and return to home using a sensor. Both can be used in driver mode and controller mode. So. The reason why some of these can't be used in driver mode is because the pulses are coming from an external source and we're not controlling those anymore. So we do have a little bit more functionality when we go to controller mode. Um, another option is to not use the standard easy limo type controller and to use what's called our Alpha Step Plus controller. This is going to be a, a drive and a controller built into one. Um, it's going to have full programmability like a, for a step motor type uh, controller and drive. Um, so we're not going to be turning on, turning off different inputs to access the 63 points. We're going to be using commands like distance, um, starting velocity, running velocity, um, make an incremental move, things like that. And we'll see examples of those programs toward the end of um, this seminar and then into when I show the demo. So advantages of using the Alpha Step Plus controller are um, it's an all-in-one driver and controller, and we're also going to be able to use RS-232 to communicate and fully program the unit. Uh, we can also customize resolutions with uh, commands that are called Gear 1 and Gear 2. We'll see a couple of disadvantages is that we're not able to do this if we're using 24 volts. Um, it has to be an AC input type drive. Also, the sensorless um, homing function is not going to be available with, uh, with the Alpha Step Plus controller. We will need to use either two or three sensors with the actuators. Also, we're going to use a conversion cable that's going to go from 12 pins down to 10 so that we can use it with that controller. As far as communicating with the Alpha Step Plus, it is an ASCII-based command set. Um, so we're going to input those. Um, we can typically do it through hyperterminal or any um, uh, any type of communication like that. Uh, but typically we do use hyperterminal to input the commands um, as far as programming goes. Um, we're going to see that it also conforms to RS-232 specifications. Uh, the transmission speed is 9600 bits per second. Alpha Step programming, a couple important features here. We're going to see that the maximum number of programs we can have are 14. Maximum lines per program are 64. Um, but we can call up different programs within a program. So that helps 
uh, in case you need to have a very long program. Um, we also have variables. Uh, we can have if statements, while statements, all those kinds of commands. We'll see that we do um, positioning, return to home, continuous, and electrical return to home type um, motion profiles. Also, we have eight programmable inputs and eight programmable outputs. Those are general inputs and outputs that can be used for um, anything that you would need. Um, any external type units could be used with those as well as um, some that are, are commanded through, through the programming. Programming sample here. <clears throat> Again, I'll go into more detail on this once we get toward the, the end with the demo, but we're going to see pretty simple programming. VR is our running velocity. DIS is our distance. MI is make an incremental move. So those would really be the only three commands that we need to make a very simple move. Now it can get much more complex than that with um, different different commands, but that would be the most basic type uh, command that we would have. We're going to see here is um, again controls, but now we're going to go into how to program a dual axis robot or dual axis um, actuators. So we have four different options now. The first is going to be send pulse and direction, uh, typically either from a PLC or a computer or from a, a, a separate controller. Um, the second option is going to be to use a dual axis controller. Uh, third is Alpha Step Plus controllers that are daisy chained together. And then the third is, I'm sorry, the fourth would be the Alpha Step Plus used as a master, which is going to send outputs to our easy limo type controller. Um, that's what I'm going to show with our demo is this fourth one that uses the AS Plus master. And then um, those, those outputs from there are going to be inputs into our controller and we'll see that we're going to make the moves based on those inputs. But first, we're going to see pulse and direction, let's say from a PLC, computer, uh, controller, something of that nature. What we're going to do is, we mentioned one pulse mode, two pulse mode. Same options would apply for, um, for this. What we're going to have here is the programmable controller that's able to output um, typically pulse and direction. Those will get input into the driver for each one of the actuators. All of the closed loop functionality um, of the alpha step motor is going to be done with inside this drive here. So we don't need a to close the loop on the PLC side or on the controller side. It's all done with inside the uh, drive uh, of the actuator. We'll see typically the pulse and direction inputs. Um, there'll be four different terminals here. We'll see input uh, pulse on these two, and then direction would be changed on two other terminals. Typically, their output from the controller, again, from uh, two terminals from each, pulse and direction. See a typical waveform here for the pulses. We're typically looking for a 0 to 5 volt type pulse on uh, and off then. Um, quickly, we'll see the uh, different on times, the acceleration of how fast the waves should get up and things like that in this form here. But for the most part, we're going to say 0 to 5 volt pulse. We'll make it move um, one pulse, depending on what our resolution is set for. Um, we'll input lots of pulses, and the actuator will move a specific distance. Second option here is to use a, a dual axis controller. One that Oriental Motor offers is called the EMP402 controller. So we'll see it pictured here. Um, there's two axes here, and then our inputs and outputs would be used with this connector here. Um, there's eight general inputs, six general outputs. Similar to an Alpha Step Plus, we're going to use ASCII type commands um, with an RS-232 communication. Important features here is that we're going to be able to coordinate uh, 
two-dimensional moves, so two axis, we have linear interpolation, and we can also do parallel processing. So we can have both of the actuators move at the exact same time. And we'll see in the next slide here um, that the second axis, if we have them both move at the exact same time, one will be at calculated speed so that they start and stop at the exact, um, exact same time. We'll see that the INCC command is what's going to allow us to make a coordinated move uh, with both axes. So pretty simple um, way to get two axes um, in very coordinated motion. The next option would be to be using the AS plus, and we're going to daisy chain those together. So we can daisy chain up to 36 units of the alpha step plus together. And what we'll do is um, we'll be able to talk to different axes then. We'll say at axis one or at axis two. We'll have to set up a different ID number for each um, actuator or motor, and we can tell each one to move based on when we're talking to a specific axis. So they will be moved um, independently, though. It's not, uh, we would not be able to tell them you know, three out of these four to move the exact same move. You'd have to talk to each individual axis separately, so at one or at two or three or four. And then the last way that we're going to talk about is using the Alpha Step Plus as a master. Um, sending outputs from that um, into our easy limo type controller. So using those M0 through M5 and start signals to make moves. Um, so we're going to see a 24 volt power source for our easy, uh, for the inputs and the the easy limo type controller, easy um, MC, that's going to be a slave type controller with alpha step plus is going to be the master. So as far as the wiring goes, we're going to see that from our alpha step plus to the e easy MC type controller, again, we're going to send, here's going to be our outputs, Y0 through Y7. We're going to send those type outputs to move uh, to our inputs on the easy limo controller, M0 through M5, the start, and then there's also some other inputs that we could use, um, our free input, a stop input, and then a homing type input. Typically, all we're going to have to use, though, would be M0 through M5 and our start. So what happens with the uh, easy limo controller is that we're going to store different profiles in there. So remember the 63 different profiles. In our demo, what I did is stored seven different profiles. So I made them all absolute type moves, different distances, uh, different speeds, mostly 300 millimeters per second. These last two, 25 millimeters, I use those because I'm going to be doing a push function example where I set the current very low to 10%. And I'll show that what I can do um, is when it sees 10% of the force that it can, can exert, I told it to reverse the direction. So it would be good for something like uh, pushing something into a, a, a hole, a bearing bore, something like that, that type of application. As far as using that stored data, Again, we're going to see M0 input, M1 input, and the M2 input. I used um, outputs 2, 3, and 4 on my Alpha Step Plus, and I'm going to turn those on to access the different profiles. So if I want to use profile number 4, I have to turn M0 off, M1 off, and M2. I would turn that one on in order to access that profile. Here's what the program looks like. So this program I called together um, because both of the axes will be moving together. Um, so we're going to see um, in red here, the alpha step plus commands are going to be moving what's called the, the EZS. It's going to be the slider. So I told it here's a starting velocity, a running velocity, 
a distance, so how far do I move, and then make an incremental move. Um, we also see that I looped that six times. Um, and then there's also some other commands here. We'll see that I put in a wait command to wait a certain number of milliseconds. But those moves are the ones that are going to move the slide. The ones that are going to move the cylinder type are going to be outputs. So I'm going to send an output from our alpha step plus to output two, four, and zero. So these two, I'm going to turn, I'm going to select the right data profile, um, one of the seven that I, we saw on the previous slide, and then zero. Um, that's going to be my start. Here's the rest of the program. Um, similar type commands here. We're going to see, again, I'm going to make moves on the slide, and then I'm also making moves on the cylinder type with the outputs. And just the end of the program here. I'm also calling a home right at the end so that it will go home. That's a separate routine um, where all I have commanded in that program is for both actuators to go home. Second um, program here I call push. This is the one where I'm going to show that push function. Um, so similar command sets you can see behind here, um, outputs, VS, VR. But what I have is the push current is set to a very low, 10%. Um, because it's set for a very low percentage, um, when I, I'm going to put my hands in front of the actuator, and I'll show that once it hits that 10% of the force, I'm going to use what's called our T-up output. That's an output that's going to, it gets sent out when we hit 10%. And when I see that we, that output gets turned on, I instantly told it to reverse directions. So give just a few minutes and we'll see that demo and you'll be able to see that, uh, that happen. Just finishing up the program here, we're going to see uh, input 6 was used on the Alpha Step Plus um, when that T-up output on the Easy Limo controller got output. So once that current is reached, we're going to use that output 5 is going to be used to stop the motion of the cylinder, and then I reverse that direction. Just the end of the program here. Same idea, we'll see some outputs and we'll see... Um, a homing routine. So on these, I typically send it home at the end of every routine so that it, it stopped at a known location. Does anyone have any questions at this point? I haven't seen anyone type in anything at this point. Um, if you do, feel free. Um, we will be going to the demo then. All right, I don't see any questions at this point. So uh, here's our demo. We're going to see that we have a two-axis uh, demonstration on this. We'll call this the x-axis right here. This is a slide. Um, it's going to be an easy S slide. Um, it's AC input. Again, the alpha set motor is built in the back. We're going to see that that's directly coupled. Here's a mounting bracket that's going to couple to what's called our easy A cylinder. So this is the cylinder that has the guide blocks and the guide rails built in it so that I can put some side load on the actuator. In addition to the two actuators, we're going to see that on the x-axis, I do have some sensors. So you can see there's three sensors. There's one here, one at this location for home, and then another limit sensor on the other extent. So as I, I can tell it to home based on those sensors. On the y-axis, I do not have sensors. You can see on either side. Um, I'll be able to show sensorless homing um, with this axis. Um, we'll also see that the drives are built on the, uh, set up on the bottom. We're going to see that this is the Alpha Step Plus drive right here, and then right behind that, we're going to see is an easy limo drive. So we'll have both um, inputs and outputs going out from both of those that are connected together. And for ease of wiring, I use terminal blocks in order to connect these. So we'll see that these are terminal blocks right here. There's screw terminals for each one of the inputs so that I did not have to solder to these connections, um, just because it was uh, just for a quicker setup. We'll also see that we have a 24 volt power supply built in here for the IO. 
the uh, drive also, we're going to see that we communicate based on, uh, we see this cable here. This allows me to connect to my computer to program. So there's a, a phone jack type connector on this end. And on the other end, I'm going to connect to a serial port. So I'll show a couple different uh, moves at this point. So the first one I'm going to show is moving together. So we'll see that as the x-axis moves, the y-axis is also moving. And we saw right at the end it homed itself again, so we can see you can see there's maybe not, uh, there's a light on the sensor so we know we're at home. It's um, on there. The next program that I want to show is called the push program. So this is the one where I'm going to, first I'll show how it, if I push on it, it's 100% current and I'm not able to reverse that direction. And the second time it goes down, I'll show that it's using the push function set for a very low 10% and I'll be able to reverse directions um, based on my programming once it saw 10%. So if I hold it, I can't reverse that direction. It's too strong. Now this next one, just by putting a slight force, I was able to see that based on that T up output and then I told it to reverse the direction. Yeah, I'll show that uh, one more time. So this one we see that 100%, this one is 10%, so just by tapping it I can have it reverse that direction. Um, I have another, another program here called PICK just to show maybe another um, program that might be more common that for customers to use. So we'll show that one at this point. So it could potentially pick up a product on this end and move it to a different location. All right. Does anyone have any questions on the, the demo setup or anything that we've gone over today in the presentation? Um, feel free to type those questions in at this point. Um, if I don't see anything, I'll end the seminar at this point, but feel free to give us a call um, at our tech support number or email us in um, to that email address that you guys were able to set up the, uh, the questions to or the, the seminar to. Right, I don't see any questions. I'll say I'll stay online for a couple more minutes here if you do, um, and I will feel free to answer those. Thank you. Have a good day.